how it happened. It, it just kind of clicked in my head one day. Uh, my grandfather was an artist, and, and so I grew up in you know in his workshop, and he taught me a lot about art and woodwork and stuff. For years, I, I dabbled in many different forms of art: uh, sculpting, painting, sewing, drawing, woodwork, everything you could think of. I'd get my hands on. My problem, though, is that I would, I would never finish a project. And so puppetry is perfect because it's all the projects that I want to work on, but it's uh, towards one goal. It feels like I'm supposed to be doing that. It's a way for me to express myself and uh, I guess to act. I mean, I never thought that I wanted to act and I was always very, very shy. Kind of, a lot of my friends will make jokes and say like, oh, you must be really manipulative and you must want to, you know, control people in the situation, but it's not, I don't feel like that at all. It's more of just being amazed that something inanimate is alive. But then sometimes it's it's kind of more weird and abstract than that. It's like a, a, a joke about life. Little dolls pretending to be people. This is a, a marionette that I built. His name is Gorg Moth. Uh, I built the whole body and sewed the cape from scratch. Made the hands and stuff. The control bar up top. I like to make him like summon stuff, <laughs> like he's doing magic or something. Make him do the Bela Lugosi thing, like he's a vampire. Um, I learned a lot about building marionettes from books. Uh, when I first got interested in marionettes, I would just read books constantly. And then I learned a lot from, from working at Bob's just from, you know, kind of peeking inside the puppets. <laughs> He's tired. Ugh. I've, I've never written anything for Bob or for at the theater, but it's, it's kind of difficult to present Bob with stuff. Helped write uh, a play that we did with uh, The Dead Man's Bones. And he, Zach, and Ryan kind of came up with a lot of it. And, you know, they would kind of shoot ideas at me. And I would say, well, we have these puppets, and that'll work with that. I worked in a, a Japanese gift store in Torrance, and uh, my manager at the time, I would tell her I wanted to be a puppeteer. And she asked me if I had ever been to the Bob Baker Marionette Theater in downtown LA, and I said, what? There's a marionette theater in LA? And she said, yeah, one of these days after work, let's drive out there and see if it's still open. And I knocked on the door and Bob actually answered. And I had no idea who he was or anything. And, you know, I kind of tried to get a job on the spot, and he said he didn't really need anyone. And so I, I literally begged for two years, until finally one day my friend Matt told me they needed someone for Christmas. I had a job at the time, and I quit the same day and found out the bus route and just went for it. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. I just wanted to go ahead and introduce Mr. Baker. This is Bob. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for being here with us today. Uh, this keeps us open, believe it or not. People coming to the theater. We're still trying to stay open to the best we can here. We're training new people all the time. It must take to train them to do that. To me, it looks so complicated. <laughs> we usually practice in front of a mirror for a good month or two. 
Um, I've been puppeteering for eight years, and I still feel like there's millions of things I could still learn. We have to just show them how they work the puppet, how, they, how you do the staging, uh, how they listen for their cues, uh, what they do when they uh, have uh, when the puppet is on stage, and then one of the biggest things that they have to learn is how they take care of their puppet off stage. It's just as important of how you hang the puppet up and take care of it as it is everything else, because it, without the puppet being in good condition, uh, when they get out on the floor, it won't work. They'll be tangled. Uh, strings will be broken, and so they have to they have to pretty much keep track of all their puppets. Well, when Nicole came, uh, I guess she she was. Uh, pretty new to puppetry. She had seen probably seen puppet shows, and probably had played with a puppet, a non-professional type puppet, somewhere along the line. But uh, uh, we 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 had to show her how to how to manipulate it, and uh, uh, you I'd show her the tricks that could be done, how to make him bow, how to make him turn his head from side to side. Uh, she learned how to move gracefully with the puppet and she knows how to take the puppet to a child and, and talk to the child with the puppet and be able to move it away before a child can uh, capture the puppet. I, 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 she picked it up rather rapidly, if I remember. I think I totally understand how a, a child feels when they watch a puppet show and, and what it means to them. I just, I think that's incredible. And I, I see life and energy and all sorts of inanimate objects, and I always have. And I still give things names and, you know, feel like they can feel things. A puppet coming to life is, is not that, you know, unreasonable for me. Like, I don't think I would be that shocked. I don't think I would flip out if a puppet started talking to me. I think I'd be like, oh, I expected that. <laughs> Let's go see the frog. Uh, this is Bob's storage room for all his puppets. I think he has about 4,000 marionettes in here. Here's Santa. Just in time for the holidays. <laughs> Probably on This is my favorite. He sings a song about being pretty. But he's very old. And very cute. Can you help me back in real quick? Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
experience for the day. Adiós.